So today, I'm going to talk about living in a broken world with anger. Do you ever get angry? I, it's a silly question, I know. I mean, everyone gets angry. Uh, we can't really avoid it. There is so much going on around us to help us really go down that road to anger. Never mind the stuff that goes on in our own lives, right? Not just around, around us, but in our circle. I guess we need to realize that there are many types and levels of anger. And, like, anger can be an emotion. Anger can be a choice. Anger can be fed. Anger can be starved. Do you ever find yourself feeding that anger? I mean, I know I do. I don't, like, I think we're capable of it, and most of us do it. It's, it's kind of hard not to sometimes. That adrenaline starts going, the endorphins release, and, yeah. It's this, it's this beast that starts off as this angry little kitten, right? Like we see in the videos. Um, but it can really turn into an angry tiger if we feed it. Uh, I catch myself doing this often, and my wife catches me all those times that I don't see it. Um, partners and friends are great for this when we get anger blind. Be careful, though, because they need to be very gracious, because when we get like that, we're usually, like, we're usually not very happy to hear about it, and often we don't respond well when it's pointed out to us, which is... Another thing we, I'm sure many of us have to work on, I know I do. It often starts as an irritation or frustration. And in my case, I often let that correction, if you will, help that frustration grow, right? Instead of responding to it the way I should. You know what I mean? Um, we vent, like we vent for a while and we should leave it there. But no. I vent, then vent some more, then vent some more until the venting becomes complaining. And complaining turns into jacked up frustration until it's full on emotional anger. Anyone do that? Or am I the only one? The Bible records this in Ephesians 4.26. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. I heard this verse many times before I, before I became a Christian. Um, I thought it didn't make sense. I thought, surely my emotions can't be a sin. Now I feel can't become a sin. It's a little different. So it's true and it's false, right? Let's break it down a bit with this whole anger thing. <clears throat> Stuff happens, right? God gave us emotions, right? So... Anyone want to make sense of this? Feel free to leave a comment. Uh, it's not about the feeling or emotion. It's about what we do with it. Uh, let's look at what Jesus said about murder, for example. Matthew five twenty-one to 22. He said, You have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of judgment. But I say to you, that whoever is angry with his brother without cause shall be in danger of judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, which is like calling him a fool or, or what have you, shall be in danger of the council. But whoever says, you fool, like that's now we're angry, fool, not just passing off fool, but, you know, you're stupid, you're whatever, um, shall be in danger of hellfire. That's kind of a scary thought. See that being angry is compared in this situation to murder. It gets worse though, right? If you feed the anger and start lashing out at your brother, your own judgment increases and increases. This is not to say we don't get upset or angry. It does say without cause in there. Now, even if we have cause, do you think any good will come of it if we continue down that road? No, obviously. Jesus points out that we become the problem and the one with some explaining to do at that point. Now, I get angry. When God came into my life and put his spirit in me, um, he took some of my struggles and, and, and just wiped them completely away. Uh, some of them. He knew me better than I know myself, and he was clearly aware 
that I have some bigger fish to fry in my life. <clears throat> I, like the rest of us, am a work in progress. I'm moving forward uh, in this, but there are many ups and downs. And like the streets of Winnipeg, my uh, path is riddled with potholes, just like everyone's. That is why we need good Christian friends around us to support us. God convinces or convicts us of these things when then our support network needs to come alongside to listen, love, and support. And give us, you know, maybe that smack on the back of the head once in a while. <laughs> if um, you ever heard a child yell, I hate you, you know what it feels like when anger moves from emotion to sin. Has this ever happened to you? Have you ever said that to anyone, your parents or, or someone? How did you feel? When anger turns into sin, it becomes ugly. And um, when we feed it, it becomes a monster that destroys everything in its path. Um, let's look at it through Father God's eyes. Genesis 1, 27. So, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. We're created in God's image. So who do we hate when we hate someone? An image bearer of God. Would you agree that that is not a good thing? So I chose to start with anger because it was something that convicted me. It is a huge struggle in my life. Uh, when I go through scripture, uh, we see how destructive anger has been through the ages. Cain killed his brother in anger. Solomon tried to kill David. Sorry, Saul tried to kill David in anger. The list goes on and on and on. Yeah, actually, a lot of people tried to kill David in anger. <laughs> but what does that mean to us? Do we feel in control when anger goes beyond the threshold of sin uh, and rage? No. We are anything but in control, and we do things often we cannot take back, things we can spend years trying to undo or recover from. Walking out on families, spouses, parents, etc., is it ever worth it? No, never. Can we avoid it completely? Not really. We are in this, this broken world, so we need to walk in the Spirit, as Scripture says, and avoid walking in the flesh. To live in the light of eternity, not for that, that little moment that we're in. This is one of the hardest things we'll do, at least while we're on this earth. We're bombarded with reasons not to do what is right, and to feed our pride. The pride that is fueled and controlled, uh, uncontrolled anger, showing the world um, we are right or someone has wronged us, etc., and blah, blah, blah. None of this matters in the light of eternity, does it? When we are with Christ, these petty squabbles, will they matter? No. They're washed away, wiped off the slate. Part of our time down here is to practice this behavior and grow in faith and understanding of God. We were created for so much more. We were created in love to be loved, not to hate and be hated. We need to rise above this stuff. Remember earlier when we read to be angry and sin not? By the way, there is a clue in there. Did you notice that it doesn't say don't be angry? He knows. He walked this earth. He was abused and cheated and beaten and lied about and lied to. Does that not sound like kind of like the stuff we face sometimes on a daily basis? Well, let's read a little further and see who really benefits from our anger, our sin, and our hate. Just one more verse to put it into context. Ephesians 4, 27. It's the next verse. Nor give place to the devil. He's real, guys. And he wants you to be angry. He wants you to ruin your testimony, your family, your friendships. What do you notice about those people who are angry all the time? They tend to be alone. Some will even say they prefer it that way. I believe that is pride. Pride that won't let us go, let, let us let go of the anger that has been put 
really in control of our lives. So what do we do? Well, in the case of hating your brother, Matthew 5, 23 to 26, is what we do. Therefore, if you bring a gift to the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First, be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gifts. Agree with your adversary quickly while you are on the way with him, lest your adversary deliver you to the judge. The judge hand, hand you over to the officer, and you be thrown in prison. Surely I say to you, you will by no means get out of there till you have paid the last penny. Quick Coles Notes version, let it go, make up with your brother, move forward. You never win when you hate. Only hate wins. And it will always cost you dearly and more than money. That's collateral, peripheral damage. That's the cost is much greater than that. If someone has truly wronged you, turn it over to God. One of two things will happen as a result. God will avenge you if you've been wronged. Or God will convict them of their life. And perhaps they will come to salvation. And that's, that's, that's the preferred one, right? As much as in the flesh it may feel good for a moment when someone gets what they got coming, but it's, it, it's infinitely better when God can change a wicked heart and cause it to turn from its wicked ways to good, isn't it? In closing, let's consider this. We see so much anger and hate in the world, and we see nothing good ever comes from it, so it is pretty logical for us to say it comes from the enemy. It is the opposite of what God wants for us, so let's not feed it, because we know who we feed when we feed anger. Instead, let's turn it over to God first, not after we screw it up by trying to fix it our own way. I fall back on these basic fundamentals of our faith um, when these times come, um, after my wife reels me in and calms me down. I remember to focus on these three things. We're called to love God all the time. Love people all the time. Share the gospel, which is Greek for good news, all the time. Give it to God and get the victory. Otherwise, you know who wins. So let me close off with this one piece of wisdom from Ephesians um, 4, 28 to 32. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give who has need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you on that cross that day. Go in peace, my brothers and sisters, and turn anger into love.